Welcome everyone to my new series on Zen Framework 2. My name is Anthony. What we're going to be covering in this new mini-series is how to install the Skeleton application from Zen's website. You can find the documentation for this online at framework.zen.com. Now I've personally never used ZF2 before. I have a background in Codeigniter, Symphony, and Laravel. I've heard a lot of things about Zen online. I think it's taking a little bit of a beating right now in the PHP community. However, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to go through this application and make my decisions about it after. It seems that the idea behind ZF2 is configuration over convention, which is the opposite of a lot of frameworks like Laravel, which is convention over configuration. So I'm going to go into this in, with an open mind and see how I feel about it once the application is done. So the first thing you want to have up and running in order to install Zend on your localhost is you'll want to have git installed. You can go to git-scm.com and follow the install process here. Regardless if you're using Mac, Windows, or Linux, um, there is going to be a download for you. And installing Git is outside of the scope of this tutorial. However, uh, it's not very difficult, and you can also find other tutorials online to help you with that. After you've installed Git on your computer, go to your command line and type git-version just to confirm it's installed. The next thing you're going to want to make sure you have installed is Composer. This is necessary in order to install Zend and all of its dependencies. So just go to getcomposer.org and go to the Getting Started pages. And you'll see a link to different um, operating systems here. If you're on Windows, go to the Windows link. Um, that's going to give you an EXE you can run. However, if you're on Mac like me, I'm just going to click on this Globally link right here. And I'm just going to copy this first line here and we're going to use curl to install it. So I'm just going to pop over to my command line here and paste this in. Hopefully it tells you that all of your settings are correct for using Composer and then it will go ahead and download it. We'll see that this is finished now. I can use it um, with PHP Composer.far. So we can try that out right here. If I actually type um, ls right here, we should be able to see it. You'll see the file right there. Let's type PHP Composer.far dash dash version and you'll see we have the version here it's actually a hash um, however I want to be able to use this globally no matter what project I'm working on so what we're going to do is we're going to move composer.far to somewhere that's within our path so let's take this next line right here and paste it in so we're doing mv to move it we're moving composer.far to user local bin which is in our path and then we're just going to rename it as composer I'm going to hit enter right there, so that should be done. If I look at the current directory again, I won't see it anymore because I've moved it, and now I should be able to just type composer dash dash version, and we should see the exact same thing, and I've now moved composer into my path. Now probably the fastest way to get up and running with a skeleton application is by using the create project command of composer. So what this is going to do is it's going to download um, this repository from what we've specified right here in the repository URL. It's going to download all of that and it's also going to do a composer install in the background which is going to install all of the dependencies so you're not going to have to do that manually. Instead I'd like to do this in a little bit more of a manual way so you can see what's happening under the hood. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the github page for this. You can find it at github.com slash zen framework slash zen skeleton application and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the right here. It says HTTPS clone URL. I'm just going to click here and copy this. And then I'm going to go over to my command line. And I'm going to go into my main directory where I hold all of my different sites. In my case, I do this in mam slash htdocs. But I'm sure you will have your own folder for storing all, storing all of your sites. And because I have git installed already, what I'm going to type is I'm going to type git clone. And then I'm going to paste in the URL that we're going to clone from and I want to clone this into a directory called skeleton so if we didn't specify the next option it's going to create a new folder called Zen skeleton application but that's a little bit too long for me so I'm just going to write skeleton here and hit enter so that is going to clone into the new skeleton folder and we'll just give this a little bit of time to download okay so that's finished downloading now and we can see it um, within our sites directory here in this new folder called skeleton. We've now done that initial install so if I hit enter right here 
we'll get an uncaught exception, runtime exception. This is because we haven't run composer install yet, installed and installed all of the dependencies, and we're going to do that shortly. One thing I'll mention quickly is if you want to have a custom URL like I have right here, such as skeleton.dev, the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to add this to your host file. The location of the host file is different on a Windows and a Mac. Because I'm on a Mac, what I'll do is I'll do a cat to etsy.host, and we'll see all of my different custom URLs right here. And because I'm using MAMP Pro, this was added automatically uh, for me by MAMP Pro. You'll see it at the bottom here, skeleton.dev. But you can also edit this file manually. So if you're on Windows, the location of the host file will be different. If my memory serves me correctly, you can find it at windows slash system32 slash drivers slash Etsy. So you can use something like Notepad to edit this. However, remember to edit it as an administrator or else you won't have the rights to edit this file. So after you've made the edits to your host file, what you're going to need to do is add your own vhost. I have some other tutorials on that, so if you search my channel for vhost, you should be able to find how to add your own custom vhost for Mac and for Windows. However, just to show you really briefly what that's going to look like, I'm just going to go into the, my Sublime Text right here and I'm going to look for that file, so I'll go to Open. And because I'm using MAMP Pro, um, this is located in the Libraries folder, so I'm just going to scroll to the left here and go to Library. And within Library, I'll go to Application Support, and go to Absolute, MAMP Pro, and then the Comp folder, and then HTTP.conf. Um, it's different if you are on uh, the regular MAMP. In that case, it will be in your Applications folder, and then MAMP, and then the comp folder, you will find it in there. Um, but if we just scroll down to the very bottom of this, we should be able to see some of the virtual hosts that MAMP Pro has added for me. And we'll see something like um, anthonyvipon.dev, which I use. And you'll add your document root in there. So this is going to be the location where your index.php is located. We also have the directory block in here. One thing that's really important here that you'll want to have set when using Zen Framework 2 is you want to have allow override set to all. What this is going to do is allow that HT access file to work. So the HT access file within our Zen project is going to be able to override some Apache defaults. So you'll want to have your virtual host block, your server name, your document root, and then your directory with some options like this. Again, I don't want to talk too much about vhost here because I have some other tutorials on that. But needless to say, if you want your own custom domain like skeleton.dev, you need to edit your host file, and you need to add the virtual host, and you need to restart your Apache after that. So if we take a look at the error message I'm getting right now on my skeleton.dev, we'll see I'm getting an uncaught exception, runtime exception, and it's asking me to run composer install. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, let's go over to the command line here, and let's delete this right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cd into our skeleton folder. Let's take a look at what we have in here. We have our public folder. That's where index.php is located. And the reason why this is not working right now is because our vendor folder doesn't have everything that it needs right now. Let's just cd into vendor really quickly and take a look at the contents here. You'll see all we have is a readme and a zf2. If we look at what's inside the zf2 folder, um, we'll see there's nothing inside there. So I'm going to go back into the root of my skeleton application here. The root will be where you see the composer.json and composer.far files, and we'll just do a composer install from here. So what this is going to do is it's going to find all of the dependencies that are laid out within the composer.json file. It's going to download those all from the internet and install them into your vendor folder. Okay, so that's completed now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cd back into my vendor folder and we'll see there's a lot more stuff now. We now have an autoload.php file, a bin folder. Let's take a look at what's inside the bin folder. We have a few PHP files in there. Let's look at what's on inside the composer file. We have some class loaders in there. And let's do an ls on Zen Framework. So we have all of our dependencies now. Let's go back over to the browser and see what status we're at right now and we'll see the application has been totally installed right now.